In this segment, we'll meet our candidates for the 98th House of Delegates District seat, Barbara Fuller and Joe Funkhauser. This will be a, an open seat, so uh, whoever wins this primary, moving on to the general, and uh, eventually a new delegate will be seated for the 98th. They'll each get a minute, so two minutes for an opening statement. We'll uh, reverse order for the closing statements of the same length. I ask that each of you confine your answers uh, during the Q&A session to one to two minutes as well. If your name is invoked by your opponent, you have the right to a direct response. Just raise your hand, let us know, let them finish the sentence, and then we'll come to you at the next opportunity so that you can respond to whatever it was that you may have wanted to comment on. Uh, additionally, uh, if uh, you have a question that you feel needs more than the amount of time that we generally allow, let us know you think you need to go into more depth, and we'll do our best to accommodate your request uh, for more time. Uh, now for opening statements, uh, Barbara Fuller will begin with you first. Good morning, and thank you so much for having me here to this year. Um, my name is Barbara Fuller. I am running for the Republican nomination for the delegate position of the 98th District. First and foremost, I am pro-life. Life begins at conception, period. Um, as a constitutional conservative, I firmly believe in a limited government, individual liberty, and rule of law. I'd like to reduce existing taxes. I will not support unjustified new taxes. I am pro-Second Amendment. I will always oppose any legislation that would revoke our current ban on red flag laws. While I'm not opposed to private solar, I have sincere reservations of their uses commercially. The potential for catastrophic damage to our county is ine inevitable. I fully support expansion of coal and gas so we can become energy efficient. I am pro school of choice, however, I would like to see all the money follow the child. We need locality pay for our teachers, our police, and our corrections. About me, I am the uh, wife of a retired Air Force Tech Sergeant. We retired uh, from Colorado and moved to West Virginia. My husband works for FEMA. And Barbara, if you don't mind, could you move a little closer to your microphone, maybe lean into it a sure. bit more? Um, and upon... Uh, my children's graduation, I decided to go back to school. I am currently uh, in my junior year of uh, Liberty University studying law and policy with the end goal of uh, taking my LSATs and going to law school afterwards. Um, my main reason is selfish why I'm running for delegate. I want my children to be able to stay here. At this point, all of them are leaving, and I really want them to be able to stay. Thank you. Joe Funkhauser. Good morning. Thank you for having us here to better inform the voters in this important election coming up in May. My name is Joe Funkhauser. I'm running for the Republican nomination for the 98th District in the House of Delegates representing Jefferson County's Southwest um, Territory. I'm running because I want to improve and, and make West Virginia a more wonderful place to live, work, raise a family, and retire. I'm a lifelong Jefferson County resident. I uh, graduated Jefferson High School, Shepherd University with a degree in political science, West Virginia University College of Law, um, and I'm an attorney and a farmer and a reluctant politician. I'm, um, you know, I offer my candidacy to Jefferson County to be the 98th district effective voice in Charleston to champion common sense Jefferson County, Jeffersonian values, West Virginia values, rooted in faith and family, as well as transparency, accountability, and integrity in every facet of government. My experience with the community um, goes, you know, my, with my entire life. I, I'm very familiar with Jefferson County, and I think I offer a, a great chance to represent it and would like to, to represent all of the district as well as the county. I've served on the Jefferson County Farmland Protection Board through my term limits from 2005 to 2012. I currently serve on the Charlestown Horseman's Benevolent and Protective Association Board of Directors since 2012, as well as the Charlestown Racetrack Chaplaincy Board. Uh, the, the thoroughbred industry is very important to Jefferson County in West Virginia. It has an over $500 million annual economic impact on our state and it is about 15% of Jefferson County's workforce. I'm representing, uh, you know, but we have, we have issues in Jefferson County. 
that uh, need to be improved. I think the legislature has done great work and over the last 10 years since it's been in control of, of the Republicans to be, have more conservative values. Um, but there's still work to be done, particularly with issues confronting Jefferson County and in responsibly managing our growth, keeping more of our tax dollars in Jefferson County, and I would like to be part of positive solutions to make West Virginia a leader in free market and conservative policies because we have very stiff competition in our neighboring states and regions. I'm pro-life, pro-family values, honored to be endorsed by West Virginians for Life, honored to be Bureau. I'm a staunch advocate of protecting our Second Amendment rights as well as all of our rights to safeguard individual liberties. And I'd like to increase funding for our traditional public schools, grow the Hope Scholarship while lowering taxes. Please visit joeforjefferson.com to learn more and contact me. Thank you. I would ask each of you to slide a little bit into the middle just so we can get you more on mic. You're both kind of soft-spoken, so we're having a little trouble getting good volume from both of you. So uh, just keep in mind when you do respond, uh, try to lean into that microphone and give us as much volume as you can. All right, now for our first question, John Gilstrap. It's interesting. There's been a recurring theme among the delegate candidates over the last couple of days, and you know, they're almost at odds with each other. On the one hand, we want to uh, we want to keep our young people here. We want to bring more young people in. We want to keep the tax dollars here. We want to bring industry here. But on the other hand, we like our horse country. We we want to maintain the bucolic, lovely nature of Jefferson County. Uh, how do we achieve? both of those at the same time, and which is actually more important? Do we want to emphasize bringing industry and businesses into Jefferson County? or And, and if so, how do we do that and still maintain the bucolic nature of the county? We'll start with you, sir. Mr. Well, uh It's a good question, and I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. Um, economic development has been the major issue for West Virginia, not only our region, but the whole state for, for decades. John F. Kennedy was campaigning on it when he was here in 1960. And you have to have good jobs to provide the tax base and grow the tax base. We have to focus on not only attracting new good businesses with the right policies, do our due diligence to make sure they're worthy of our investments and provide a stable investment climate for them to seek to invest into our state and our region, but we we have to improve economic development policies for all size businesses. Uh, you know, I, I've experienced the, the lack of great opportunities, and like about 50 percent of Jefferson County's population, I commuted for many years, and, and, and thankfully the silver lining of COVID, I'm able to work remotely now, but not everyone's able to do that, and we have to embrace our heritage, our, our you know, um, I, I, I've talked to thousands of, of, of people during this campaign, and, I, and not one of them says, I want Jefferson County to be like Fairfax County. Um, that, that they move here for a reason. A lot of them move here uh, f because we have more conservative values, because of our more rural environment and, and a, a place where they have more comfort in uh, investing and raising their children, and I'd like to keep it that way. But on the other hand, you know, there's, there's some issues we have to – We've done a pretty good job with economic development, but there's room for improvement there where there's there's not as much transparency. And I think that's the crux when it comes to the Rockwell or this foreign energy. I think you know you have to have transparency and accountability metrics to make sure there's there, it's not just some backroom deal. It's fully proposed, a comprehensive cost benefit analysis. That this is why it makes sense to do it. And I think there's room to to improve there um, while allowing our, our state and our county to to seek those investments and and improve our businesses. I tend to agree. Um, where I do differ is I know that Jefferson County has very specific um, areas where we have development, um, which would be where your rock wall is, where we have our Home Depot, and those lots tend to stand vacant. But what we're doing is we're taking valuable farmland and turning it into solar compounds, which I'm not a fan of. I, I think that they're toxic. Um, I don't think that they have the ability to produce the revenue that we need. 
Um, I am uh, in favor of uh, industry that is able to produce a revenue that and jobs that our, our children can work at. My own son worked at Ron Rockwell, and it was a viable wage. Um, to bring more companies like that, that our children could have jobs and raise their own families, is paramount. And we need to be able to look into uh, all different kinds of economic development. But I would like to point out that when we're selling out our farmlands, there are people who actually do want to farm, and they just cannot afford um, to be able to buy those farms. And that is another opportunity for those farmers who wish to sell their land or lease it to somebody who would like to farm. There's so many different things that we can do, but I believe that uh, we do need to get our economic development back into check. Bill? I had a question, but I, I'm going to follow up on uh, what you've said. Uh, all of us would like to use John's word, uh, this uh, wonderful farmland protection. But the farmers who own the land have every right to sell the farms for their own, own benefit. How can you – that is fairly inconsistent with what you just said, Ms. Fuller. Well, so everybody has um – the right to their property and you can do whatever you want on your property but your property rights and where your neighbors start. Um, I'm a, a true believer that as the host of my property I need not to be noxious that I would damage the, the values of my neighbors properties. Um, I believe in my heart that if the farmers were offered other opportunities, um, I've spoken with them. I was at the, uh, the, the meeting of the 2025 vision, and I asked one of the, the farmers, I said, well, why, why did you sell or why did you lease your property? And he said, because that was the only option that was given to me. So when it's the only option, it was either sell to a developer or do solar, no one mentioned anything to him about saying making a vineyard, leasing to horse properties, which I know that they're looking for, for land so that they can raise their horses. No one even offered that to him. So yes, they can do what they want with their land, but I don't think they're given a fair shake of what is available to them. I'll use this as my question, John. Uh, Mr. Funkhauser, uh, what is your comment? So just could you repeat the question? Yeah, the, uh, the question is we've uh, – uh, Jefferson County has been faced not, not now, just now but for the last several years with the challenge of, uh, of keeping the land in a beautiful, idyllic state or sell to development, now solar farms, or the case may be. It's the right of the farmers uh, with their land to dispose of it as they choose to. This is an issue that came in Berkeley County a couple of so years ago. How, you, how would you reconcile the difference of trying to preserve the land, but yet the farmers have every right to dispose the land as they choose to? Well, uh, you know, I, I'm astonished. You know, proponent of, of private property rights. Uh, I would certainly confer with the Farm Bureau, the, the Voice of Agriculture, on the best way to tackle this issue. But, you know, I, the, the Farm and Protection Program, it's voluntary. It's voluntary for the counties to seek to be, to, 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 to fund that. And we get matching funds from the federal and sometimes from other NGOs. And so there's a, a balance that's played there. And certainly advocate for, if that's the, the best interest, the farmers can voluntarily go that route. Um, and, and I'm, I'm you know, happy that, that thousands of acres have been preserved for generations to come, um, especially the, where we are in our agricultural heritage. Uh, on the other hand, you know, Jefferson County is one of, I think, six counties in the whole state of West Virginia that actually has countywide zoning. And so these are policy choices that are made with a comprehensive plan of what zones th there are, rural, in industrial, commercial, generally. There's a few others, and there's variances and waivers that are policy discretions uh, at the county commission level. And so, you know, 
there's a lot of folks in, in the county that they have an additional layer of protection knowing what zone they're in. It's a residential zone and or a rural zone or there, there's buffers in a lot of these uh, developments, these housing developments that are adjacent to, to property that's protected in farmland protection. The, all those lots are gone within a few years because people have that assurance and stability because they know that that's not going to become a junkyard or whatever. And so I think this is more of an issue with the county commission and the, the policy level of the policy choices they made on how to enact that ordinance. And I think there's vast room for improvement in looking at that again instead of rushing it through, doing more due diligence, providing, you know, yes, while protecting property rights, they have to balance the, you, you, you can't blight the neighboring property, right? Um, and, and having more buffers and, and you know, doing a comprehensive cost benefit analysis there and doing your due diligence and that it, it goes with the comprehensive plan. John. All right. As a delegate, would you support home rule for counties? And we'll start, I believe, with you, Mr. Bunkhauser. I think okay. you went first. Okay. Home rule for counties. So, I mean, I guess it would depend, you know, how far you want to go back because there used to be, when West Virginia was first formed in the state, it would, there was counties that they did have home rule, and then it, all the state took all that power back when they recodified the code in 1931, and they've selectively sort of doled it out. And so generally, I'm a, a local powers, local solutions guy. The people that are making the best decisions uh, are, are those the one most affected by it, you know, uh, generally. And, and, and so, you know, but you also have to have a layer of uniformity where it, it, instead of jumping from one municipality to the county, or, or, you know, throughout the county, you don't have these huge just hodgepodge of rules and regulations and ordinance you have to navigate. So that's, that's the, the question. And so generally I support the home rule, but it, it should be, there shouldn't be any tax increase associated with that if the counties are going to keep the 1% or whatever that may be to fund their local government, then the state should decrease that in a corresponding amount. You know, we have, we've been having this conversation, it's, it's a tax issue. And we've been having this conversation for, you know, 10 years since the Republicans have been in charge of the layer. What's the optimal tax policy for West Virginia? And so most of West Virginia are border counties. So when you increase that sales tax too much, people start shopping even more on their commute home or commute to work in Maryland and Virginia. And, and, and you know, you have property taxes. Our property taxes are generally lower here. Uh, and I'd like to keep it that way. And, and you know, then we have the, the income tax. That was the great compromise there in the legislature's last few years. And I think they set up a great framework to have triggers being with the fiscally responsive government to continue to lower that income tax, attract more folks uh, to West Virginia to invest here and um, live, work, and raise a family. And so home rule generally support it. The devil's in the details on, on how that gets accomplished. You know, um, I, would, I would certainly work with all the stakeholders, all the municipalities in the county on, on the best way they think would help craft that legislation. But if it involved taxation, no? Is that what I heard? No. It's, it, it's, it's with the trade-off of if the state sales tax is X amount, the initial 1% wouldn't be an additional. The state would get less, and so there was no I tax, see. tax increase. A readjustment. I'm, you know, I'm not for any, any increased taxes, um, uh, and frankly, I think there's room if with uh, a smarter budget approach where we can actually continue to decrease taxes. All right, Ms. Fuller. I am uh, in favor of it. I do believe that um, the Eastern Panhandle, uh, we've been saying it for years that we support the rest of the state. Um, a lot of our taxes go go there and we don't get, we don't realize quite enough back. Um, I believe in home rule. Uh, you know, I want to be able to to make sure that, that we are taken care of here in the Eastern Panhandle. And, you know, I, I, basi I fully agree with Mr. Funkhauser. It's, it, it, it's, it's a necessary evil. Uh, let me ask, uh, my question will, will ask for a specific uh, item as opposed to a general response. And I realize you're in neither one of you are the incumbents, so you have not been involved with the makings of sausage with all the, uh, as the legislators, uh, you will. What items in the state budget 
would you support for increased funding? And the corollary is what items would you target for reduced spending? Ms. Fuller. Um, items, state budget, obviously would be locality pay. I think that we need to take care of um, our teachers, our corrections, our state police. Um, I would increase the, um, our roads, our roads need to be taken, our infrastructure is, is very important. Um, reducing, uh, there's so many, so many different things. Um, I would say that uh, the uh, personal property tax or the business inventory tax, I would like to see that um, abolished. It does not foster uh, economic growth in our, in our state. Um, I believe that we need to do a better job with um, reducing the uh, Social Security income tax. I know that they're going through, uh, they're phasing it out, but what I understand, um, I heard in another meeting, was that with the reduction of that, uh, the income tax on your retirement, Social Security, that it is going to be raising your, you federally and you'll have to pay on the other side. I would like to see that fixed. Um, and I think that's that's some of the, okay, what you. I would. Mr. Von Kaiser. Great question. Um, certainly agree um, with Ms. Fuller on um, eliminating all taxes on retirement income. That's what North Carolina does. I've seen a lot of good former West Virginians move to North Carolina because of that. Um, and they're good members of our tax base. But I think your specific question was what should be increased in the budget, what should be decreased exactly. in the budget, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, agree also on locality pay, all public employees, that we, maybe we should call it something different to do the exact same sc uh, scale or at least region as the federal government does and call it cost of living adjustments. Maybe that will get it to the finish line. This has been an ongoing debate for, for decades of how do we get locality pay, and it's not just us. You've got Morgantown, you've got the Northern Panhandle. So I think there is um, a path there to to get this to the finish line and without having to amend the Constitution There's um, to overturn the REC decision. Um, and, and there's been some tweaks at it, but it's not it's it's not across the board. And so, you know, how do you negotiate with the rest of the state to do that? And um, in terms of the decreases, you know, I think we need to have a new audit of the uh, um, all of education. I think with DHHR breaking that into three groups, looking at those line item budgets. Though, I mean, that's the big the, the eighty percent of the state budget goes to education and healthcare. So those are the big those are the big things you have to really go line by line through to to not necessarily decrease it, but maybe find more efficiencies there, and 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 um, ultimately, you know. You, you have to work with the federal government and there's matching dollars in a very precise way where we maintain our sovereignty. They, they, a lot of those dollars comes with strings attached. So, and, and, and to navigate that, but you really have to go line by line, look at the, you know, you go back to the last major education audit, it found it was very top heavy. Um, and, and uh, you know, and, 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 and perhaps there's a way we can right size the education bureaucracy in Charleston and send some of those resources to the front lines in the classroom school service personnel where it's needed more and can be more effective. Let's move to closing statements now. And uh, Joe Funkhauser, we will begin with you. Well, thank, thank you for having this uh, debate to and, um, and, and hosting this forum to better inform the voters. Uh, my name is, is Joe Funkhauser. I'm a lifelong Jefferson County resident, and I, I'm pro-life, pro-God, pro-gun, pro-Constitution. Growing up and living in Jefferson County with our population doubling during my lifetime provides insight and understanding to the issues and challenges of our community. My background as a business and civil lit litigation attorney demonstrated public service conserving Jefferson County as a board member of the Jefferson County Farm and Protection Board, being an advocate for West Virginia's thoroughbred industry in Charleston and here at home. I do have experience in navigating the, the state legislature as well as the ex executive branch, and I pledge to zealously advocate for Jefferson County's interest and to meet with all interested citizens of the 98th District to hear their concerns and ideas for improvement. Please consider voting for me in the upcoming primary and contact me at joe 
jefferson.com. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Barbara Fuller. Again, my name is Barbara Fuller. Um, I would appreciate um, a vote on May 14th. Um, I would love to be your nomination for a delegate. Uh, I, as I said, I am pro-life. I am a constitutional conservative. I am pro-coal, pro-gas, pro-small business, tourism, and pro-school of choice. While I may not have had any formal um, legislation uh, activities in, in the state of West Virginia, um, I actually belong to a group which is called NIARC, which is the New York Adoptee Rights Coalition. And I was uh, able to successfully, uh, with my coalition, um, pass in New York State a, um, an open records bill. And that is uh, one of my, my uh, crowning glories, uh, being an adoptee and being able to have open records in New York. We fought for it for 15 years. And um, when I say that I'm a fighter, I'm a fighter. Um, I am not establishment. I am true to the core, um, and I will fight with my heart and my soul. And um, if you are interested, my website is fuller four number four wv.com, and you can email me at bfuller four wv at gmail.com. And I look forward to serving. Barbara Fuller, Joe Funkhauser, thank you both very much, and best of luck to you both in the upcoming election. Thank you. Thank you. The candidates for the 91st will close down our broadcast for today. That will be the incumbent Don Forst and the challengers Joe DeSoto and Tammy Hess when we return.